Hey, it's me. I'm back after a couple of failed filming attempts. I was like, let's just sit down and record something that I genuinely would love to watch. For me, there's always been something kind of calming about having a physical copy of some sort of visual inspiration, whether it is a coffee table book, magazines, a K-pop photo album, if you will. But when you find a really good one, it just doesn't matter how many times you've flicked through it before, I always get enjoyment out of it. So today I thought we could look through some of my vintage Japanese magazines together. It's not a huge collection yet, but I do have a few different publications spanning from like the late 90s through to the mid 2000s. And if you are wondering where I got these, I actually have a video on my full buy haul, but you can get them magazines themselves for a pretty cheap price. Just be mindful of the shipping because these are pretty heavy. I do wish I was actually able to go vintage shopping in person in Japan, but you know, the internet, a marvelous thing, keeping me happy in the meantime. Same goes for being able to tune into Japan's version of Netflix because trust and believe their catalog is so much better than ours. And of course, it is all thanks to today's video sponsor, award-winning VPN Surfshark, that I'm even able to do that. The version of Netflix you see can be completely different to someone on the other side of the world, but with Surfshark, you're able to quickly and easily change those location settings and then instantly have access to a ton more content. Probably not a big surprise, but you can find a lot more up-to-date anime if you switch over to Japan, but you can keep playing around with the locations, that way you never run out of something to binge watch. But Surfshark is so much more than that. To me, they've become an everyday essential in order to ensure my safety online. They do this through various methods, including adding an extra layer of protection when you're using public Wi-Fi, or by preventing companies and bots from tracking your personal information. And since Surfshark actually offer unlimited devices under just one account, you will always feel safe. You can get an exclusive Surfshark deal if you enter my code SPOTLIGHT plus three extra months for free. And since Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it all risk free via the link on screen and down below in the description box. I feel like I just quickly have to get this out of the way because it is probably the most well-known publication, which is Fruits Magazine. Unlike some of the more, I guess, traditional forms of magazines I'm gonna be talking about, Fruits was actually dedicated to street style photography in Harajuku, which featured a lot of different J fashion subcultures. Because these are so popular, the prices do get kind of crazy, but honestly, I wish I had just splurged and gotten one of the 90s editions. I ended up going for 2002. I thought that would still be in like a safe realm, but no. Let me tell you, this did not give like any color whatsoever. And personally, some of my favorite shots are the more decor style ones. So I was very disappointed. So sadly, we're not gonna be featuring her for inspiration today, but I am gonna do a full dedicated lookbook in the very near future, probably featuring the book that I have that's kind of like a best of collection. One that I will 100% be purchasing more of is Cutie for Independent Girls. I believe this started up in the late 80s and was targeted towards teenage girls. So definitely more of a focus on on coverage of what is popular and trending in the mainstream at the time. Even if you're not familiar with the magazine itself, especially if you're a K-pop fan, I feel like you would be familiar with their logo because it's used in so many K-pop edits. I mean, come on, we can't blame them. It is iconic and perfectly suited to the title. This one I have is from 1997 and it is a winter edition, hence the vibes we've got going on here. It almost feels like a 70s sort of inspiration with the patterns and the knitwear, crochet. I really like the concept of the two page spread where you have one that is the photo shoot and then the other that just features flat lay of similar sort of items. I wish I had been recording the first time I opened this and realized that the cardigan I own is literally featured in it. But yeah, some of these not so much my personal style. I feel like this is almost getting into like whimsy goth territory, like definitely looks like the sort of thing that Phoebe from Friends would wear. Super lovers though, they always know how to bring it back into my realm. I'm not sure how I feel about the choice of hat, but I definitely like the outfit. This even reminds me of like my old Unif sweater that I still wear to this day. I love these two looks though, like the pattern clashing going on here. And this one, cute core, hello, ahead of its time. This look in the middle, the pink fluffy scarf, obsessed. Also just the concept to do this kind of like mixed media collage, but I think it's actually in real life rather than edited in. It reminds me of like the viral TikTok girl at the moment. So iconically 90s, like something so nostalgic about looking at that picture. This is what I mean by the simple cardigan, longer skirt. I really need to invest in some nicer ones. I swear I've busted the shoulder out of a bunch of mine. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, for sure still feel like there's that 70s influence, which makes sense. The trend cycle was always supposed to be like 20 years, so it checks out. And 
I could totally recreate something similar to this, so I'm excited. Not gonna lie, I kind of skipped past this spread at first, but looking back, I am obsessed. It's giving me like cool girl librarian, which if you guys didn't know, that is literally my dream job. So I'm very into this style at the moment. Bro, the watches though, I know what I'm searching for on Bayi when I finish filming. Oh my God, and the ads too. I love it when you find a good vintage ad. And I feel like there's so much to offer from this sort of time period, like the late nineties leading up to 2000 with like the cyber sort of feel to it. But yeah, heaps of good inspo, especially if you're into graphic design. This is cute, very much up my alley. Like if I toned this down a little bit, I feel like I could potentially fit in. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the one that has a young Chloe Sevigny feature, of course, goes on to be a Tumblr it girl. But yeah, just generally, I really like this publication because I feel like it has a good mix of everything. There's obviously fashion, doing their own photo shoots, but also the flat lays. There's beauty, hairstyles, street style snaps, manga. So obviously there were a lot of plaid skirts, which I happen to love. And they definitely were keeping it more on the simple side, which I know for some people can then lean a little bit too uniformy. So I thought perhaps a cool way to switch that up would be to go for a different fabric in the bottom down. There was also a lot of tides, particularly in red. Was originally visioning the neutral sort of Mary Jane, but now that I've tried it on, I think I'm leaning towards the loafer. It just feels like more the style they were going for. I think for the vest, I actually want to go with another layer of plaid. Obviously the one in the skirt is a smaller sort of subtle print. So I think going for something more bold in the vest works. And what if I tried to secure it with the Vivian Westwood brooch? Wait, that's actually kind of cute. The overall look though, I'm really into. I feel like there's so many elements from my own personal style, but it's almost like toned down and a little bit preppier. Like it just requires a little bit less effort and it's very wearable for every day. Of course, I had to sell the Hysteric Glamour cardigan again because what are the chances of it literally being in one of the magazines I own? I'm still flawed and I get so much wear out of it. I'm kind of disappointed because look how perfect these kind of like bandana print shorts would have been look straight out of that same spread but unfortunately my butt doesn't fit into them anymore however i still wanted to go for that more like casual laid back sort of vibe so i just went with these red gingham shorts instead literally feels like i'm wearing pajamas i think she's really cute 100 percent would wear i could be kind of biased because i feel like all i want to wear at the moment is red but whatever this is what i was talking about is this dress not perfect for that shoot and honestly this is where being a low-key hoarder kind of comes in handy i probably thrifted this about eight years ago you know when like a bunch of the 70s trends were popular again i'm gonna layer the flares like they did but i don't think i'm gonna layer the turtleneck just because it's too hot and i just I can't do it to myself right now. I'm also going to change out the belt just to make a bit more of a statement. Okay, I ended up changing my mind a little and ditching the belt altogether, but I like how it turned out and it's kind of giving the vibes of not just that particular shoot, but some of the other spreads throughout as well. The only thing is for me personally, I'm not so much like a browns neutrals girly, so it feels a little bit plain for me. I definitely prefer it if we could switch it out for a brighter color palette. The other one I have is from 1998, so pretty much the same era, but this one is a summer edition so you get a bit of a different feel and some of the looks in this one are definitely giving 2023 Pinterest girl with a layering I mean look no further than literally the front cover clothing with fruit motifs I feel like it's gotten trendy again recently of course going with the juxtaposition of something more masculine and girly and they have a whole section on longer length slash Bermuda style shorts which obviously we've been seeing all summer with jorts what I'm really drawn to though is what they're calling girly Bermuda, which is more so like a capri pant with a skirt laid over the top. They have a really good spread of accessories in this one, as well as a whole segment dedicated to shoes. I love how they used to do like footwear brand photography back then. So good. Okay, we're literally going to be here all day. Don't even get me started on the cute stationery and little knickknacks. Like, ugh. Tell me why even the ads are fitting the trends of today because Clock Tower Ghost Head, I imagine, is giving the same as horror game protagonist outfits on TikTok at the moment. I thought I'd show you the full look from today because like I said, I feel like it fits. Another cute option for it though could be to layer on a track jacket. Yeah, I feel like that is 100% meeting the brief. I would probably change out the ribbons to a different color because now there's a little bit too much red going on. And if you wanted to take it a step further or maybe instead of, depending on how you're feeling, I think 
a jeans layer underneath could work. I actually like this way more than I thought I was gonna. I thought it'd be a step too far even for me, but in fact, it feels like the cherry on top. Definitely would have overheated if I wore this the whole time though. I'm really just not a big shorts wearer and even less when it comes to like these three quarter length capri sort of styles. It looks cool on other people, but whenever I try to style it, something just feels off about the proportions. The only pair I have you guys have already seen me attempt to wear, so I thought I'd go for like this lace cropped legging situation which I feel like is somewhat adjacent and also very much back in trend at the moment especially if you're going to try and style it up like this in the bloquette sort of realm I don't know I feel like I'm happy just to leave this one on Pinterest like I don't see myself wearing it outside of the house I'm here attempting it once again with these shorts because obviously there was a big shorts feature in the magazine and definitely across Pinterest all summer long. Also keeping in mind that we're only just getting out of winter here so I haven't been playing around with shorts like seemingly the rest of the world has. This is only my second attempt styling them I believe and yeah it is it's giving Disney Channel a little bit, isn't it? But I don't know, I think it is still kind of charming. That could also be because I'm obsessed with this top. I style it with everything. I think the final verdict on this one is gonna be, it's just not for everyone's taste, but it does align with the magazine. And I do think you would definitely see it on Pinterest. Perhaps it wouldn't have the most repins, but you know, should be there. If you are into a more alternative sort of style, then I have a couple of copies of Kira magazine. Another really good one would be Gothic Lolita Bible, but I unfortunately don't have any of those yet. The ones I have are from 2004 and 2006, but this particular one is like my holy grail. I literally check by every single week in hopes that someone has listed it. We'll get her one day, but honestly, I don't think you'd be disappointed with any copy of this magazine. She is thick and she is jam packed full with various types of content again I love when they have a good mix and I gotta say if you are a fruit stand I think you will love this because they have a decently sized section dedicated to street style and the outfits are just as iconic not as much variety because obviously they have a particular aesthetic that they stick to featuring so you're not going to see as much of like your pastel fairy k or your super colorful decor but what they do feature is top notch some of the styles aren't necessarily what I would personally wear but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate it on someone else they still look amazing and there are still a bunch of items that would totally work in my wardrobe like we've got these little bloomers I love these outfits these pants incredible and I mean look at this bow shirt and actually pages like this I love because it gives you so many ideas on what to search for on Makari both of these outfits are stunning and I kind of like the concept too it's like breaking down the accessories and even what's in their beauty bag moving on to the other one now and instantly I'm just obsessed with this shoot on like the deserted beach and the focus is supposed to be on the coats so many gorgeous ones that always surprises me like you can get coats for so cheap secondhand on makari it's wild to me this feels like it's for the girls who are excited for the black butler return oh and this is cool it looks like promo for kamikaze girls coming out on dvd this is literally nana and haji in an alternate universe you cannot change my mind yeah i feel like i almost prefer this one just for me personally it feels like there's a lot more kind of like girly looks mixed in there rather than just sticking to the more punk inspired like the two 2006 edition had and I mean I know I already mentioned it but again just to emphasize how good their street style snaps are definitely deserve more hype some cool accessory features as well I don't want to look too closely at it because I know it'll make me want to spend too much money on Vivian Westwood and I just I can't justify it slightly different approach this time around because there's actually one particular street style image that sparked my inspiration to dig this out of the back of my closet it's been way too long since I styled it I actually purchased this in Osaka Japan back in 2018 but I haven't worn it nearly enough because I always struggle with how to style it so I'm so grateful that I saw this picture and it sparked some inspiration because now I am obsessed with this look. And this is the sort of thing that really doesn't feel trend driven whatsoever because I could picture this in a Japanese magazine anytime from 2000 until today. Like I mentioned, I was enjoying the more girly sort of looks. Obviously bows are super popular at the moment and there were a few featured. I thought that this would be a great base for us because I did actually get it secondhand on Makari. It's by the brand Mezzo Piano. After a few extra layers, I think we're good. This is like a really cute springtime sort of look. I feel like it is totally on brand. I kind of actually accidentally covered up the bow shirt in the end but I do think it was necessary because this polka dot little cami just pulls everything together perfectly. Oh but what would actually top it off though is if I just had like a giant oversized gloomy bear.
You see the vision? I do want to try and style something that I guess is more traditionally what you would think of when you think of Kira magazine, something a little bit darker, like pop punky, I suppose. And this I thought was perfect for the job, especially since it is Trip NYC, which I think is just like a cult classic brand when it comes to that genre. If you ever wondered how I learned to lay out, I feel like this video has probably answered that question. And honestly, this one actually turned out better than I was expecting. Same goes for this whole segment of Kira magazine is the one I was most worried about because they're the most daring, I guess. But I think the key in curating your own style is to keep the inspiration really loose and that's why I like this so much. The other ones, I was kind of trying to relate them back to current trends and then I was getting too in my head about it. Whereas with these, because everything's kind of timeless, I feel like you can just put your own creative spin on it. But I mean, everyone's different. Maybe you think these ones are actually the worst of the bunch. I don't know. Let me know which ones are actually your favorite. So unlike the others, Zipper Magazine wasn't one that I was previously familiar with, but I saw it for really cheap and on front cover, it said Happy Berry. So I was intrigued. And if you were wondering, it ended up being just this little DIY page. Don't get me wrong, this does have some good inspo but I find it not to be as jam-packed as the other options. I'm not really sure what the goal is but there's definitely a heavy emphasis on headwear accessories. We have these cute little animal ear ones, there's bandanas, beanies, cowboy hats and then a bunch of various crocheted options. This particular one totally reminds me of something you'd get from Cepheus. And we do have other winter accessories featured as well like the ponchos. I feel like they're set to make a big comeback this coming season. I love the strawberry beanie and scarf set from Super Lovers. Heaps of cute options. This spread from Betty's Blue is going to be living rent free in my mind as well. But seemingly the main focus in this one is hair. Hairstyle inspo, hair cut inspo. There's a lot of short sort of styles. Not overly intriguing for me personally because I'm just not really a hair girly. Like I do this one hairstyle and call it a day. But I do find ones like this interesting where the main point of the shoot was still the hair but they put her in a super cute fit like she literally looks like she could be on TikTok right now. And like these girls, they look so cute. This one's giving Josie and the Pussycats. And if you guys haven't seen that film, 100% recommend. It is like 2000s camp in all its glory. Oh, and I love this star print dress. And their street style feature was actually from London. I feel like that was the most common crossover back then. Oh, and I thought this little panel was cute with like the baby tea collection and the little knickknacks. It totally reminds me of some of the collector's shoots that you see today. And as you've probably noticed, in all of the magazines so far they like to do these page spread brand features but this one I think I'm the most jealous of like I wish I had every single item in my wardrobe even just the hysteric glamour page alone but then we have milk which features that same star dress from before but in a different colorway some really cute staple pieces from our ozone community they seem to be like a fan favorite in all of these magazines and i wasn't previously familiar with jane marple but i love this spread this like skirt pants situation and then this kind of gathered skirt i mean all of it is kind of giving Vivian Westwood a little bit. This two-piece set from Candy Stripper looks like something that Heaven by Marc Jacobs would try and recreate. The other thing I thought was cool was having a few pages dedicated to DIY knitting projects. I just thought it was cute and also very on topic for today because there's so many small brands popping up that specialize in knit and crochet. And honestly, if nothing else, I feel like this is such good inspo for like a fun editing layout. But yeah, as you can see, there's just not as much like photo shoot concept spreads, I guess. There's a lot more of an emphasis on the flat lays and the damn hairstyles. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Of course. I was gonna break out my little beanie scarf combo with the star tentacles. I know you guys have seen this so many times before. I was like, do I even have a new way to style it? But I think I do. And I'm kind of taking more inspo from some of the earlier magazines we looked through. And when I say taking inspiration, obviously I meant that quite loosely because it's literally just the concept of pairing a cardigan with a long skirt. And you know what, now that I think about it, I believe I have already styled this hat and skirt together before, but I think this is like a more casual, laid back sort of version. The sort of thing that I'd wear to like the markets or something. I just love these colors so much. I don't care that I am allegedly a light spring, okay? These like icy pastel blues and the pastel pinks 
will always be my favorite. And kind of sticking on a similar theme, taking inspiration from that DIY segment as well, I have this knitted vest. I believe it's handmade because there's no tags in it whatsoever. I got it on Depop, but I just love the color combination again. Typically when I've styled this vest in the past, I've tried to go for more of like a relaxed, cool girl with a denim maxi skirt, but I really like the knitwear brands that have this kind of like magical fairy sort of essence to them. So that's what I tried to channel today. In my head, it's giving fairy who moves to the city in the early autumn and I love it. I know a lot of people probably associate fairy core with like 2020 fashion when there was a new aesthetic popping up every other day. But if you're a true fairy girly, I feel like you're in it for life. I do still have a couple more magazines, but I feel like the length of this video is surely getting out of hand at this point. So I'm just gonna call it there. Let me know if you did enjoy this type of video though, I'd be more than happy to film another one. And before you go, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Surfshark. All the links will be down below in the description box. But yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you really soon. Bye.